So our fourth snippet for this week is going to look at Bush's performance in international affairs. Um, and Bush was a very successful uh, president. Uh, in terms of uh, of how he handled international affairs. He worked very well with his foreign policy team. His two closest advisors were these men, James Baker, who was on the right, uh, who served as his Secretary of State, uh, and Brent Scowcroft, who served as his National Security Advisor in the middle. And they are, you know, the, the Bush philosophy is, is this idea of, of realism in the sense that American national interests can be calculated, that the U.S. should should work cooperatively with international allies as necessary to advance the national interest, and not to worry too, too much about morality one way or the other, which for the most part serves Bush relatively, uh, relatively well. His three big international initiatives, two successes, one more of a failure. Um, the first uh, came against Saddam Hussein, uh, uh, generally a U.S. adversary, but the U.S. sometimes had cooperated him in, with him in the 80s during the Iran-Iraq war. Hussein was, uh, you know, had taken uh, control of Iraq in a military coup, uh, would present himself as a Western businessman when he wanted uh, 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 foreign credits from either Europe or the United States. But in, in 89 and 90, he increasingly presents himself on Iraqi te uh, television and newspapers as a military official. You see him here in his military garb with, with the gun. Um, and his target is Kuwait, a small country uh, that borders Iraq to the south that was oil uh, uh, rich and with whom Iraq had a number of disputes, uh, both uh, regarding allegations that Kuwait was stealing Iraq's oil by drilling below the surface, and the fact that Iraq, uh, Kuwait would not forgive loans that had been made to Iraq to help Iraq fight the war against uh, Iran. And so in August 1990, Saddam's forces sweep into Kuwait um, and uh, easily oust the government. There's some thought that they may move even further into Saudi Arabia, but in what was a tactical mistake by Saddam, uh, he doesn't do so. His assumption is he invades Kuwait, the Arab states will more or less go along and he will gain control of Kuwaiti oil. Instead, the Saudis are worried that Iraq is going to attack them. Uh, the Bush administration assembles this very powerful uh, international coalition, which includes most of the Arab uh, world, even Syria, longtime U.S. foe, um, and the close cooperation of the Russians. On, on the right is um, uh, uh, James Baker with Edvard Shevardnadze, uh, Gorbachev's uh, uh, foreign minister, and the Soviet Union actually supports U.S. efforts uh, in uh, to to get uh, to force Iraq to withdraw from uh, from Kuwait. The UN resolution, uh, the UN passes a resolution, Security Council, demanding that the Iraqis uh, withdraw, threatening a, a UN-sponsored invasion if they don't. The US, the British, and the French send troops to Saudi Arabia right along the, the border. Saddam uh, assumes that this is all a bluff, although he's facing this very significant international coalition. All of the states that are in color on this map are states that have contributed to uh, the, the military force, sometimes only in token amounts. But as you can see from the Middle East, lots of Middle Eastern countries are supportive of this uh, effort, and virtually all of the West European countries are as well. So, so H.W. Bush, you know, this is a, a diplomatic success. This is not simply a U.S.-Iraq war. It's an international community against Iraq war, with Iraq having virtually no uh, foreign, uh, foreign support. Up until the end, Saddam assumes that this is all a bluff. He discovers that it's not. The U.S. quickly uh, 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 expels Iraq from Kuwait. Um, U.S. troops enter into southern Iraq, but ultimately choose not to move all the way to Baghdad to, uh, to topple Saddam's regime and instead set up these things called no-fly zones. Um, in the northern zone, which is primarily Kurdish, this is a success. In Kurdish Iraq, becomes in effect independent uh, after 1991. In southern Iraq though, which is primarily Shia, um, the U.S. does not do much to prevent Saddam from reestablishing his control. So the regime continues to be brutal throughout the 1990s, but the policy success by Bush of getting uh, Iraq out of Kuwait turns out to be correct. And Bush's hesitation about moving into Baghdad and, and toppling uh, Saddam entirely also probably was correct. He was concerned that if the U.S. got rid of Saddam, it would be stuck with a divided and chaotic Iraq, which is, of course, exactly what happens after the second uh, Gulf War. The second big Bush foreign policy accomplishment is the dissolution of the, uh, of the Soviet Union, which largely was, in, in retrospect, was inevitable as a result of these three countries, Estonia, Latvia, 
and Lithuania, which were independent between World War I and World War II, and are then annexed by the Soviet Union uh, after World War II. So remember, Gorbachev had been pulling out of Eastern Europe, restoring a degree of freedom and ultimately complete freedom to the East European countries. These people in the Baltic states say, you know, if, if you're pulling out of Eastern Europe, you should pull out of our uh, areas as well and restore our freedom. The problem for Gorbachev is that these areas are now part of the Soviet Union. So if he lets Estonia, Latvia, and Lithuania go, how is he going to be able to go to the Ukrainians or to Kazakhstan and say, you know, you have to have to stay in? So the, 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 the fate of the Baltic states becomes a test of whether the Soviet Union can remain as an independent uh, uh, entity. Their international profile is highlighted in, uh, in August of 1989 when a human chain, and these are photographs from the chain, a human chain is created uh, from, uh, from Tallinn, the, cop, uh, the capital of Estonia, the northernmost of the Baltic uh, states, down to Vilnius, the capital of Lithuania, the southernmost of the Baltic uh, states. And the chain occurs on the 50th anniversary of the Nazi Soviet uh, pact, right before World War II, which had contained a secret provision granting Estonia and Latvia to the Soviet Union. Lithuania was supposed to go to the Nazis. They, the two sides later renegotiated. So the idea is to use the 50th anniversary of this moral um, shame as a way of highlighting the cause for Baltic independence. In 1990, Lithuania goes ahead and declares its independence. The Soviets send in some troops, but a, a, a calm is created largely as a result of pressure from the United States, strongly urging Gorbachev not to crack down with a full-scale military intervention, you know, a, a, a deposition of the, uh, of the Lithuanian regime. And ultimately in 1991, the Baltic states will become, uh, will become independent. By this point, the dissolution of the Soviet Union has become all but inevitable. Uh, in the summer of 1991, there was a, a military coup which is launched against Gorbachev uh, while he's vacationing in the summer uh, in the Crimea. That coup is frustrated uh, in large part due to opposition within the Red Army itself and due to political opposition from Gorbachev's uh, you know, sort of political rival in the reform group, Boris Yeltsin, who is at this point the president of Russia, which is uh, secondary to, this, to, uh, to Gorbachev's uh, position, but he's be the equivalent of kind of a governor in the, uh, in the US system. Uh, Yeltsin urges uh, the troops not to execute the, uh, the, the orders of their commanders and to take control of the government. The troops ultimately uh, back down. The coup plotters are arrested and, and imprisoned. But in the aftermath, it's clear that Gorbachev no longer has any political power. That power has devolved to the individual units of the Soviet Union. And on December 31st, 1991, the Soviet Union ceases to exist. Russia becomes an independent entity into of, of itself. And the other provinces of the Soviet Union, Ukraine and Kazakhstan, the largest and most powerful uh, of the two, also become independent uh, countries. And the battles of these successor states, uh, Armenia and Azerbaijan, uh, Uzbekistan, uh, Tajikistan, and, and Kyrgyzstan, will become major elements in 1990s uh, and even 2000s foreign policy. But this all occurs, you know, largely in a bloodless fashion, um, uh, and, and the U.S. helps without seeming triumphalist about what's, uh, what's going on. And they, they, at least in the short term, they avoid a nationalist backlash in Russia, although as we all know, that, that's not what happens in the, in the long term. The last big foreign policy event from the Bush years, and one where he clearly failed, um, uh, came in the dissolution of Yugoslavia. Uh, which was an ethnically divided state which crumbles in the aftermath of, uh, of the end of the Cold War and where the most serious problems come in this middle province in Bos Bosnia and Herzegovina. Uh, so you can see on this map, this is an ethnic map of the former Yugoslavia. You can see all of these different ethnic groups that were kind of mixed together, especially in Bosnia, which had no ethnic uh, uh, majority. And the key player in this was the head of Serbia, uh, a man named Slobodan Milosevic. And Mil Milosevic is what political scientists call a kleptocrat, which is that he was the, he's an autocratic leader, but his goal was less ideological than just accumulating wealth and exploiting the, uh, the economy. Uh, this is his wife, this is his son. They really, his, his family was really quite a prize. Milosevic eventually will die in prison awaiting crimes for, uh, awaiting a trial for, for on, on war crimes. Um, but Milosevic encourages Serb nationalism, first against Croatia uh, and then against uh, Bosnia. 
when Croatia declares its independence, the Serb uh, military invades. The Bush response here is to do nothing. Uh, and Bush's argument is that Yugoslavia is a European issue, it's not a US issue, and therefore, the, even though what Milosevic might be doing is morally problematic, the US simply can't get involved in every morally problematic activity that's going on in the, uh, in the world. And the result are these scenes of, you know, of real human deprivation where the US is largely standing aside. There's strong criticism of Bush on this front in the, uh, in the United States. And in the end, what will become clear, Clinton is gonna to have to solve this, uh, this problem. Um, what will become clear is that this is not just a European problem that's threatening to spread more, uh, more broadly. So in Yugoslavia, Bush's uh, uh, realistic uh, calculations ultimately, uh, ultimately fail. Um, so this is the this ends up the fourth of our, our our snippets, which looks at foreign policy, and our last snippet is, uh, is going to look at Bush and domestic affairs. 